Thank you everyone for sharing and for listening to each other. I found myself as I listen with an open heart, I really hear threats, themes. I hope you do too, the articulation is different and some of the particulars are different, but there's this theme that we have. We can recognize how there's more at play in any given moment like causes and conditions that are influencing the moment that are outside of, maybe greater than, but certainly outside of what we might wish for ourselves in the moment, right? Things arise, whether it's an overindulging or a lethargy or non-doing or a too much doing or it's an avoiding or if it's a compulsion, <laughs> like a pull of technology or got to get this stuff done. Like that those are not very different things, actually. They're this way that, oh, right? There's some conditions that have manifested and I'm getting pushed. I'm getting pulled, like that's what happens. And as was articulated, our practice allows us to recognize this and to write our course, like you would write a ship, right? Not about right and wrong, good and bad, not that. But, oh, yep, I'm a little off course here. And then we can write it. Like we have that agency, we have that power. And then we get off course again. And then we write it. No big deal, right? Because of who knows what, we tend, or sometimes anyway, without a strong practice or moment of awareness, there's the great possibility of the second arrow coming in. And then we want to be hard on ourselves for having been lethargic or having overdone it or whatever it might be. Like, oh, oh, right? And there's all this second arrow. As the Buddha said, when one engages with something unpleasant, if they're an unpracticed one, they then suffer twice twofold because we beat ourselves up about it. But as we practice and we engage in something unpleasant or unwholesome or unbeneficial, it's like, oh, right, there, there's this habit that's arisen, this behavior that's arisen. Okay, I see you. And then, shoot. And that's it. It's not like the ponder, the proliferation of, oh, why did I do that again? And I really suck and la, 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 la. And if there is that, because that is also sometimes a strong habit energy, at some point there's a catching of it. It's like, oh, it's okay. And it's that beautiful hug of embrace that it, it's okay. It's okay that Diane modeled and that, that Tay talks about as a, you know, a good parent greeting the child. I got you. My favorite way to manifest that, but I got you. You're not supposed to be perfect. You're not supposed to do it right all the time. That's why we have the Noble Eightfold Path. We have these factors to help us to reorient to peace and freedom, to love and movement toward what is more beneficial. And so I invite you as we begin to settle into practice, to touch into the wholesome seeds that arose in response to the question, right? The seed of practice, the seed of joy, the seed of awareness, awe and wonder, beauty. Moment of recognizing some new flavor of practice. Julie mentioned a talk offered by Rinpoche, I guess a week and a half ago now on Wednesday. He spoke of really noticing and recognizing the stillness. And so you might play along now as you settle into a comfortable posture that's upright and stable, relaxed and comfortable, while also alert. So that you can sustain and of course if the body needs to move moving with awareness and when the body is able to be still
aware of the stillness. Right? It's an extra layer. It's not just stillness. It's not... It's not a compulsory trapped force push kind of don't move, right? That's not what it's about. It can be found in movement as well and walking or other physical activities when done with awareness. There's a settledness that's present. And we can be aware of that settledness or of that stillness. As we touch the experience, the wholesome spirit experience of stillness or subtleness with awareness, it deepens, it enriches us, it blossoms, it expands. The touching of the stillness with awareness the touching of the wholesome seeds with awareness. Allows the experience to be fuller. Allows the experience to suffuse the body. Suffuse the heart mind. This is a gift of the seed of mindfulness, of awareness, of presence, of kind attention. Logging, <clears throat> logging that experience of resting and awareness of stillness and bringing attention to the experience of silence. And of course, it won't be completely silent. But even amidst the thoughts, and the sounds, there are moments of silence. And we can bring our awareness to shine on them. Thereby increasing our ability to savor the silence, to support the silence. The silence is here too. Amidst everything else, can we notice it?
and be supported by it. Silence can be particularly palpable after a strong sound or when I stop talking. Resting into the awareness of silence. As we cultivate an awareness of silence, experiencing the silence, we might notice more silence.
me blocking that experience of resting to silence, finding the space between the sounds. Knowing in the body how it feels. Or knowing that it wasn't that available to you, no problem. And then the third aspect from which I offered was resting in awareness of space. So noticing any spaciousness you might feel in the heart mind. in the body, and the physical space that you're in. Recognize you noticing being aware, acknowledging spaciousness. And of course, as we incline the heart mind to observing spaciousness, we'll also become aware of the inverse. Fluttered mind, thoughts, physical space, sound, no problem. The recognition of this allows us to recognize the space that is holding it, the space that surrounds it. And then bring our attention in that direction. And so being an awareness of spaciousness.
and I'm noticing your state of mind now. I'm continuing as you are, if that feels beneficial, or exploring, dropping in, or inviting up the wholesome seeds that arose in response to my earlier question. Any wholesome seeds that have been present, as you've noticed during this practice period so far, or recently in your life. The seed of mindfulness is a wholesome seed, so that's enough. But if others feel like they might want to be watered and that it would nourish you, bring them into heart mind and allow them to be held in the field of awareness so that they might bloom. Seeds of awe and wonder. joy, appreciation. Presence, acceptance, contentment, love. So many possible wholesome seeds opening the heart mind to recognize, observe and appreciate the wholesome mind state. We'll enjoy about 20 more minutes of practice together. Resting in awareness is enough. Just offering some additions if you like to try them on.
Okay, is there a wholesome seed you might want to water?
What seeds are you watering? Remembering that when we remember, we have the capacity to choose.
savoring the last few minutes of stillness. The last few minutes of silence. The last few minutes of spaciousness. Befriending yourself than your own direct experience, whatever that might be. Resting into awareness of this befriending as we expand awareness into the field of movement, listening to how the body might want to move. Honoring that. Once the body is lubricated, allowing the eyes to open and taking in the field of sight with full awareness of each arising experience and each change from stillness to movement from a relative blankness behind the eyelids to sight. However excited you might be, enjoy being in this period of change.
And the body might need small movements or big movements, listening. Their help to the bathroom or some water, honoring that need. It's all practice. Allowing the sound of the bell to be an invitation and to continue to practice rather than an indication that, oh, practice is over now, and dropping it. Instead, the bell invites us to expand out, broadening the field of awareness. I wanted to talk this evening about right effort or a wise effort. I find myself sticking with the translation of right because I like the writing the course. That energy is supportive for me. It said that a commercial airline, you know, on course, let's say from San Francisco to Philly, you know, it's like it's on its journey. It's off course 95% of the time. The pilots and the machines are readjusting, 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 readjusting. It's not a problem. Yet we torture ourselves. We think that we should be blah, 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 whatever your long string is all the time. And if we're not, we're somehow doing it wrong. We want to beat ourselves up. We don't need to beat ourselves up. We just readjust, readjust, and readjust. And sometimes it's, it's a small readjustment, and sometimes it's kind of a big one, you know? Maybe it's an even, it's like, maybe it's even a 180. Fine. Fine. We notice the bell of mindfulness arises for whatever reason, we recognize it. So that recognition, that's the first thing, we recognize it. And then we apply a little effort. <laughs> uh, and we readjust. I'm not a parent. And I haven't raised a dog, but I often hear this likening to raising a dog. Like you have a brand new puppy and you want it, you're potty training it as a, in an early stage of things. <laughs> and you're wanting it to stay, I hear Pema children in my mind, you know, you're wanting it to stay on this patch of newspaper. Maybe you've got some special absorbing thing under the newspaper, you know, wanting it to stay over there. And you keep training it, encouraging it. You know, this is your spot. This is your home. And we do it kind of neurotically. Get over there. Stop. Ah! You end up with a neurotic dog. And if you do it with kindness and love and consistency, aware when the dog has strayed, you end up with a dog that feels safe in this space that is theirs. More inclined to go there when they're stressed out or when they have a need. And we can create that for ourselves with kindness and love, with noticing and gently redirecting. Thich Nhat Hanh reminds us that there's like every seed already sitting there in our store consciousness. And it's just a matter of whether it, it comes up for some reason, we have an interaction with someone or something happens inside of us. Something happens out in the world. 
and a, a seed emerges. And most of the time they're dormant, most of the seeds, not so aware of them. I'm watching my mind as I share this wine to like pull it back into the solar eclipse. And I have a few threads that are there. They're just kind of like niggling at me. And I'll just offer one, which isn't a great tie-in, but speaking about the dog and a child, a friend of mine has a very young child, not a year yet. And they live in Columbus, Ohio, which was in the path of the full solar eclipse. And he said that when everything got dark, the kid kind of freaked out. It's like, what's going on here? Totally reasonable, right? So we're going to kind of freak out when things aren't as we expect them to be. It's not a problem. Like, there's nothing wrong with that response. It's unsettling what's going on here. But we can notice it. And then we can be that skillful parent and tend to ourselves with kindness and care. like, okay, I got you. I like that I am modeled that beautiful hug or as I offered my favorite, holding my face in my hands. The skin on skin is really powerful for me. So I got you. And that is why Zephyr, not trying to talk over random sounds that occur in the world is why effort. Right, not battling things, not battling things with wise effort. I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. And then checking out, oh, is there anything that you need? Then how can I be kind to myself in this moment? Then are you hungry, angry, and lonely, thirsty, tired, hot? And we, we get to bring in some of the experiences of this body. But first it's care. And before the care, it's, oh, mindfulness, right? The seed of awareness. Oh, right, because that seed of awareness we can bring up to meet any other seed that's arisen. And sometimes it's obscure, just like very briefly today, the sun was obscured by the shadow of the moon. Often, things are obscured for us. There's not clear seeing. And we practice. And as we practice, I appreciate the reminder of, of Rinpoche's, Rinpoche's talk. As we practice, we cultivate this awareness of stillness, awareness of silence, awareness of spaciousness. That awareness is, is like just being still or just being in silence or just being in space. When we're in space all the time, like what's mostly in this room? What's mostly in your home? Space. All up to the ceiling, all the way out to the walls, like space. And there's furniture and people and plants and other objects. But it's mostly space. Like 90% space. And mostly we miss it. Right? So the space, the silence, the silence itself, like that's not it. Like that's great and everything, but like the awareness of it. That's what recalibrates our nervous system, that's what recalibrates our body, that's what allows us to recognize, oh, what other seed is here? But I might want to greet with tenderness or kindness. So the awareness. And so as we do that, we're practicing right effort. Right effort is often defined as recognizing when an unwholesome mindset has arisen. Recognizing. Awareness, mindfulness, right? Sati, we recognize it. Oh, yeah, I'm full of self-judgment. Or I'm graspy, or I'm graspy, or I'm graspy. Right? Or I'm aversive, I'm pushing stuff away. Or I'm caught in some thought. That's one of the manifestations of delusion. A fixed view is delusion. A fear is delusion. Self-judgment is a delusion. Like, we recognize that. Oh, unwholesome mindset has arisen. No big deal. Free from the second arrow. Like, okay. Unwholesome mindset. And when an unwholesome mindset arises and we recognize it, we do what we can to transform it or let it go. As I would say, change the channel. Right? And then sometimes we notice an absence of an unwholesome mind state. Right? Maybe we've been in a period of time when we're really beating ourselves up or we're engaging in a lot of compulsive behavior. 
or super lethargic and like not doing any of the things that are supportive for us. Like, okay. Oh, and there's an absence of that right now. I think I've already said this to you, but I'll probably say it a few more times as the days and months pass, but on retreat in February, I went into that retreat so angry at my mom. So angry. And I was reporting to my teacher, yep, really angry at my mom. <laughs> and then one day I got to go in and report to her, I felt an absence of anger today. And I was so excited. And she's like, was it this or was it that? I'm like, it was an absence of anger. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's enough. The absence of anger is so nourishing. And then noticing the awareness, the mindfulness of the absence of anger. That's super nourishing. And then it kept going. It went, became more wholesome than just the absence of anger, but noticing the absence of an unwholesome mind state. That's the second of the first half of these four parts of right effort. Right? Oh, an unwholesome mindset has arisen. An unwholesome mindset, an unwholesome mindset, it's not arisen. Great. We notice this, and then we do what we can to sustain that. We notice the unwholesome mindset has arisen. We do what we can to let it go or transform it or tend to it, care for it. And how do we do that? How do we do that tending and caring for? I'd love to hear from you for a moment. Any ways that you've practiced tending or caring for an unwholesome mindset? when you recognize that it has arisen? Please. Give an example. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you notice an unwholesome mindset of, of self-loathing has arisen. And you can do the opposite. You can practice self-compassion or metta or love. You can practice tenderness and care. I got you. It's okay. This self-loathing is okay. I got you. It's okay. And we know that there's some conditions that have, read, that have led to this seed arising in this moment. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it allows it to transform, but not by fighting it, right? Not by trying to push it away, but by reading it and needing it. Yeah, anything else arising for folks about you recognize an unwholesome mind state? Please. I usually go through several phrases. One is, uh, oh, here again, too. Yes. How is this serving me? That's this saving. What we share is being better. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I lovingly? Play with thought. Beautiful. Um, what would I rather be doing with my life energy at this moment? Yeah. Beautiful. Right. So you have a conversation with it and you're practicing it. You have some phrases that you've offered to yourself enough that they're there for you. Right. They're there to hold you. You're not like trying to figure out how do I deal with this. And the more we practice with the unpleasant thing, the more we find skillful means for us. That sounds really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that one. That's right. Yeah, something similar to that, but completely different, maybe not completely, but like different words, not trying to parrot what you said, but like right, to recognize and embrace. Oh, hello there. Right, as this day teaches us, hello there, anger. Hello there, fear. Hello there, self-loathing. Hello there, doubt. Hi. And then I would say, you invited to tea, right? Why are you here? What's going on? What do you need? Hi, welcome, friend. Hear that wonderful roomy poem, The Guest House. Like, hey, what's up? Like, oh, hi. Not trying to push it down, not trying to push it away, but like, hello. And mindfulness is a seed that allows us to be able to greet it, to hold ourselves with it, instead of having to run away from it or push it away. Yeah. And sometimes it can be useful to explore, investigate why it might have arisen. Like, if it's serving me in some way or what were the causes and conditions that preceded it that it has come to arise, such as in the future we might not feed those other things that came to this. But sometimes that's not so helpful for us because then we start beating ourselves up. Like, why did I do all those things? So why is this sermon allows us to recognize 
in a moment, what might be more helpful? And of course, practice our own experience of playing, playing with these unbeneficial or unwholesome mind states. Like, oh, yeah, I tried that. That didn't really work for me. Oh, I tried that. Oh, that was helpful. Note, right? Allow the mind, heart, body to note that. I can remember once in conversation with a teacher on retreat, recognizing something. I was like, oh, I'm going to write that down. She's like, no, no, no. Remember it. Just remember, right? Because that's what's available to us. The things that we remember then, the things we bring up. The more you bring it up, the easier it is to access that seat. Thank you very much. Anything else arising for folks when there's an unwholesome mind state that's arisen and you want to attend to it? Okay. And then what about those moments that you recognize, oh, the absence of an unwholesome mind state. <laughs> unwholesome mind state is here. When I when I notice that absence of an unwholesome mindset. When I notice it, yeah, because most of the time I don't notice it. Most of the time it's just happening and I'm going along with my day and I'm having an okay time and everything's on dory and it's you know it's sort of just I don't notice it. But when I do notice it, I I've learned to attribute it to something or to, or if it not actually attribute it to a specific thing, but to sort of look back in my recent history of, oh, I've been getting enough sleep, I've been eating properly, I've been getting enough exercise, or, you know, that kind of stuff. And um, and I've been consistent with my practice, and I've been consistent with the other um, strategies that I have for for encouraging that kind of mind skill. Yeah, we notice. Well, what is it such that I am now free from this, and then we do what we can to sustain it. Yeah, for me, self-care is at the top of what allows me to be less crabby, less reactive, less taking things personally, sleep, food, exercise, socializing, time by myself, meditation, contemplation. All right. And if any one of those gets out of whack, these days, there's a little bit more, the band is a little wider, <laughs> but for most of my life, ooh, if any of those got a little bit out of whack, watch out. It's like the end of the world, just off the deep end. Now there's a little bit more space, but it's like, oh, to notice. And as Jimmy named, mostly we don't notice. Mostly we don't notice that everything doesn't suck anymore. But so the noticing, like that's a piece of the practice, to notice that that unwholesome mindset is not here and appreciate it. So even if we're not ready to reflect back and see, oh, what caused that, to just appreciate the absence of it, helps to sustain the absence of it. And then we've got the other side, noticing when a wholesome, noticing when a wholesome mindset has arisen, noticing when a wholesome mindset has not arisen, right? So for very simple, not the same, but all helping us to recognize, well, what is the effort to apply at this moment? And that's why it's like, why is that? Because we need to discern well, what kind of effort is appropriate in this situation at this time? As I was reflecting on this topic in preparation for this evening, I was thinking about an eraser. Have you ever used like the red pencil top eraser that comes on a pencil or those little triangular ones you like put on? So you're erasing something and at first you try to erase it and maybe it sort of goes away. Maybe it's like the 80-20 rule. <laughs> 
however you want to apply that rule at that moment. But there's still some pencil there. But if you keep erasing, I don't know if this happens to you, but I noticed for me sometimes, now I've turned the paper red with the eraser. Too much effort, right? Not a wise effort. Maybe I could accept that 20% of the pencil lead, which of course is not lead, but that graphite is still there. Oh, good enough. You know what it was good enough, but like just certain how much effort is appropriate. And some of you know, I had a bike accident recently. It's my, I'm rehabbing my shoulder. So doing physical therapy is really helpful, but it's easy to overdo it also, but being completely still is not helpful. And so it's discerning. So in this investigation of right effort, there's a lot of discernment. Oh, what does this moment call for? It's like hungry and you're a little tired, thirsty, hot, like what's actually here? What do I need? What does this moment mean? And so the beautiful questions that you offered are resonating in my mind, like, oh, that will help us to discern what would be beneficial in this one, what would help us. Some standard Buddhist angle approaches to this are so an unwholesome mind state has arisen or a wholesome mind state has not yet arisen. We can incline the heart mind toward love, compassion, joy, equanimity, you know, just anything in the Brahma Vihara camp. Mindfulness is a wholesome mind state. That's always going to help whatever it is that's going on because mindfulness doesn't care what it's mindful of. You can be mindful of anger or fury or whatever. Oh, mindfulness is also there. It's a different experience. I find that taking the time to do something that's nourishing for me can be really helpful. Thich Nhat Hanh talks about changing the channel. You might also think about spending time in beauty. So practicing the Brahma Viharas is a way to spend time in beauty, but also going into nature or looking at art or creating art or dancing or moving the body or getting in the water or getting some exercise is a great way to change your channel. Like get bigger, get outside of this thing that's holding us hostage or feels like it's holding us hostage. It's like get, go, go outside. <laughs> there are some expressions that show up in the United States and maybe more broadly that are kind of sort of as negative expressions, like go fly a kite or go jump in a lake or <laughs> buzz off. But if you actually were to do one of those things, it's so nourishing and uplifting. Like get out there, go outside. Nature is such a healing bomb. Sometimes having a glass of water with awareness is a healing bomb. Noticing what doesn't suck, right? The non toothache or broadening the field of awareness. What else is here? What else is going on? Can be so helpful. We can get outside of ourselves a little bit because of course we have problems, first noble truth. Like, yeah, you're gonna have suffering. But what if you don't like hold on your toe tight and take it really personally and make it all about you and I'm such it's a piece of shit and I totally fucked up and all of that. Just like, oh, hi, Duka. Oh, I recognize you know what's going on. Got you. There's room for this too, was language that I received once many years ago that it continues to help me, help me so much for so many years. Like, well, there's room for this too, right? Because they're pushing it away or trying to tap it down. Ugh, it caused so many more problems, right? So a very similar response to noticing an unwholesome mind state has arisen or noticing the absence of a wholesome mind state. And then sometimes we notice Oh, the absence of the unwholesome, or sometimes we notice the presence of the wholesome. When that happens, how do we sustain it? But right? sometimes we can look back like Jimmy offered, oh, what, what were the things that allowed this moment to come to pass as it is? And sometimes we can just like sustain it. Mindfulness has arisen. Sometimes in our life, we notice, oh, mindfulness has arisen. That is a wholesome mind state. We want to sustain it. Love arises. More and more these days, I notice these, these just this thought arises of, I love you. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> like, sustain that. Don't let it go so fast. 
right? You don't want to chase after it. Can't grab it. That doesn't work either. But like, oh, hi, feeling it in the body is a great way to practice sustaining it and cultivating it. Because those seeds, when mindfulness is brought to them, when attention care is brought to them, they get stronger if they're wholesome, kind of magical. If they're unwholesome, when attention mindfulness care is brought to them, they kind of settle a little bit more deeply. Pretty fabulous. So that's always helpful. And in the sustaining, I wonder if how many of you engage in any sports or activities that have any bit of a glide in them. Surfing, swimming, biking, ice skating, roller skating, rollerblading, skateboarding. There are probably more, but those are some of the ones that arose as I was searching. Like, do anyone engage in an activity like that with any regularity or have it in your background? Great. Right, you have to glide. Imagine if you're a bike and you never coasted. Like, no, like that is not what it's about. Or if you were swimming, you just kept stroking, stroke, 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 stroke. No, you have to glide. It's a really important part of the experience. Or surfing, if you never actually rode away, even if you're just body surfing, you never actually rode the wave. No. Even the little kids, when they're learning how to scoot, you know those cute little bikes that don't have any pedals? Like part of the time, they're, they're just pushing and walking because they're learning. And then they start to glide. The freedom of that glide. Yes. That's a sustaining. And so when you notice a moment of mindfulness or you notice a wholesome mindset has arisen or an unwholesome mindset has subsided, touch that. I'm not a musician, but somehow in there, I just like kind of felt what it might be like for a musician when they're in the groove, like touch, especially jazz, like touch that and ride it. And it'll taper out, no problem. And then it will arise again, or you'll notice an unwholesome mindset has arisen, and then you'll practice, right? So just being in the dance and being, you know, like that mindfulness is there. That's what allows us to recognize and discern what was actually be suitable for the moment. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Always a pleasure to be here with you. If anything that has been offered by me or anyone in the community has been supported for you, please store it away. Let it let it settle into, as one of my teachers, Peggy Reward would say, you know, let it into the marrow of your bones, settle it down into the hard drive. Let it be there for you. Remember. And if anything has not been supportive or didn't quite land, or you're like, uh-uh, let it go. Push it off, not yours, not yours, no need, no need. And any benefit that may have arisen by our practicing together in this way may ripple out and be a benefit to all beings through our own intentions and our own cultivation of practice of awareness of kindness and love. May the fruits of our practice be a benefit to all beings and bring peace and liberation to all.